the game actually looks like on Switch. So Metroid has always been kind of a genre-defining series. I mean, we've seen it evolve from a 2D side-scrolling platformer to a full-blown shooter. And now the series is finally coming over to Switch, where it's gonna be available on more powerful hardware with some really interesting exclusive features, hopefully and just a much bigger player base overall. So it's gonna be really, really interesting to see how Nintendo adapts all of Switch's features over to the Prime series. I'm excited about Metroid Prime 4 specifically because I love that world. I love Samus as a character. I love all of her abilities and the way that she uses her power suit and the way you just navigate through that world. I mean, I'm all about Metroidvanias and I have vivid memories of playing Super Metroid on Super Nintendo with my sister and beating that entire game together. So Metroid Prime 4 is just gonna bring back so many nostalgic feels and I just can't wait to experience a little bit of the past but a lot of evolution of what that series has become to date. So the last major update to PUBG on Xbox One was the addition of the Miramar map, that desert map. Uh, and then on PC, they've been testing a smaller map, which was originally called Savage and is now called Sonok. So that's been in testing, but uh, hasn't come out yet. It's easy to forget how big of a game PUBG still is because Fortnite is dominating this Battle Royale conversation right now. Everyone's making Battle Royale games. Call of Duty is making a Battle Royale mode. Uh, but. PUBG is still the most played game on Steam by far. It, it's not even close. I think what we can expect from PUBG at E3 this year is probably a map reveal. There's one that they've been talking about for a while set in the Baltic Sea. It's gonna be probably a snowy map. I'm, I'm sure we'll get a glimpse of that at least. Uh, we'll probably also see a release date for Sonok, that smaller map. And maybe if we're getting really crazy here, we'll, uh, we'll see a PlayStation announcement PS4 on the Sony stage, but I think that's probably a year off still. What are you doing, kiddo? You really gonna go through with this? I'm gonna find... and I'm gonna kill... every last one of them. We last saw The Last of Us Part Two back at Paris Games Week 2017, where Sony debuted this awesome trailer that had no characters we'd ever seen before. It was this mystery group of women who were brand new to us, but it offered this amazing new glimpse and kind of teased that the breadth of the story may be way bigger than we thought it was going to be. The Last of Us was one of the defining games of the PlayStation 3 and also of the developer Naughty Dog itself. And so seeing where they take this sequel is fascinating to look forward to. The Last of Us is still one of the most powerful and emotionally driven narrative games I've ever played. And so part two could be an amazing continuation of the story with characters that we love and I'd love to see more of them. The Last of Us Part Two should be coming to PlayStation 4 hopefully in the next couple of years, but we will definitely be seeing it at E3 2018. Sony confirmed that it is going to be the centerpiece of their E3 showcase, which I hope means we see new gameplay and see how that has evolved just as much as the actual storytelling has evolved. I played the original Last of Us over two days, and it was one of the most memorable gaming experiences of my life. That story between Joel and Ellie is so powerful, so relatable, even though it's in this weird, strange, post-apocalyptic world that we're not used to. I don't go running around shooting guys in the face who are trying to steal my knapsack full of knives and put together bottles of potions, but it still is so relatable, their dynamic as sort of this pseudo-father and daughter relationship that becomes so much more powerful as it goes along. I never expected we'd get a sequel. I thought that story was very much contained and ready to go as it was in this perfect sort of encapsulation of that world and these characters. So I'm really excited to see what story they have to tell because that means there's something really powerful about Joel and Ellie's future 
that they have and that they want to tell us. And I can't wait to see what that is. Watch your backs. In its wake came an age of silence. But let us embrace whatever it brings. For they are coming back. We haven't seen Final Fantasy VII Remake in a very long time. It was originally announced at E3 2015, and uh, it's sort of gone radio silent. The last big news that we got about it was May of 2017, when Square announced that they would be taking development internal. They were originally partnered with CyberConnect2, but now they've taken the whole game and moved it to an internal development team, which leads me to believe that they're probably starting over from scratch. Simply put, the reason why we're excited for this game is because it's Final Fantasy VII. This is one of the biggest and most important games of all time. Uh, the, the idea that they would reboot this game with the graphical fidelity and the power of the PlayStation 4 behind it is exciting to people who are Final Fantasy fans like myself and the populace at large that never got an opportunity to play it. Now the original Final Fantasy VII was a PlayStation exclusive, but obviously we've seen Square Enix port some of their big franchises like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts to other systems. So we may see Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4 as well as Xbox and PC. Now as much as I would love to see Final Fantasy VII Remake make a huge reappearance at E3 this year, I just don't think it's gonna happen. Square has been radio silent for too long and it just seems like maybe they're taking their time to do a really important, really big re-reveal, but it might be too soon. At last, the promise has been made. We last saw Kingdom Hearts 3 earlier this year at the D23 Japan Expo event where we actually saw a big new reveal of the Monsters Inc. world, which is one of the first Pixar worlds they've ever had in the franchise, alongside Toy Story, which is also in Kingdom Hearts 3. This game is going to look so cool based on what they've shown recently. So the game is still slated to come to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, even though the main number titles have only been on PlayStation platforms. Hopefully what we've seen so far has been a mix of PlayStation and Xbox footage, but we don't really know yet. The game will undoubtedly be at E3 2018. They're still slated for a 2018 release, so they have to show one big final push for the game sometime this year. E3 makes the obvious choice to do that at. Hopefully you will see it on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One because I can't wait to see what Kingdom Hearts 3 looks like in 4K with HDR enhancements. This game can look absolutely gorgeous. We're really excited for Kingdom Hearts 3 because what they've shown so far have been these massive open worlds that are a big departure from what the franchise has done before. And hopefully we're gonna finally get a capper to Sora's journey that started all the way back in Kingdom Hearts 1. And personally, I've been waiting since the first Kingdom Hearts game to see this journey kind of come full circle. So I cannot believe that we're finally getting to see how this plays out. Fortnite is the biggest game out right now and it's not losing any momentum. It's a polished free to play game with daily and weekly updates to keep you coming back. There's crossplay between all platforms and if Epic wanted they could take the whole cake and release it on Nintendo and Android which are the last two platforms Fortnite is not on. The last big update to Fortnite was Season 4 and a map change. All through Season 3 there was a common easter egg and it ended up hitting and turning Dusty Depot into Dusty Divot. And it's awesome to see Epic so involved with the community and give us so much replay value for one mode, which is Battle Royale. Fortnite is going to be a huge deal at E3 this year. They're throwing a 100 player tournament where they take the top 50 Fortnite players and 50 celebrities and they pair them together for a duos tournament. We may even see a glimpse of a new DLC like we did with Thanos, where an IP like Star Wars could form a relationship with Epic and Fortnite. Honestly, the floodgates have been open with this last Marvel crossover and anything could happen.
Is this what you wanted? Is this what you were looking for? Was everything you've compromised, everything you've done, worth it? We haven't seen Halo 6 yet, obviously, but everybody knows it's coming. It is, it's not even a secret. We all know, it's assumed, we're definitely getting it. It's just a question of when will it be announced, how will it be shown, and when's it coming out? We're excited for Halo 6 because it's Halo. It is Microsoft's biggest first party franchise. We haven't had a mainline Halo in three years. Halo 5 is the reigning awesome multiplayer Halo game, probably the best Halo multiplayer since Halo 2. The question remains, what's gonna happen with the campaign in Halo 6? A lot of us weren't such big fans of Halo 5's campaign, so we wanna see where is Halo 6's campaign gonna go. Halo 6 will obviously be an Xbox One game. It'll be really cool to see what they do on Xbox One X. This will be the first Halo designed with that in mind. Uh, but what's more interesting is 343 has given some not so super subtle hints in recent times that uh, this Halo, Halo 6, probably gonna be on PC as well. There is a sort of version of multiplayer for Halo 5 Guardians that you can play on PC, but odds are I think there's a pretty good chance that the entirety of Halo 6 will also be released as a PC game. I would put the odds of seeing Halo 6 at E3 2018 at about 99. It's time. That chicken dinner will have to wait because the biggest video game event of the year is finally here and we've got your ticket inside. This is E3 2018. IGN is coming to you live from Los Angeles for six days and almost 50 hours of coverage. And you don't want to miss a second of the action. You'll see the explosive press conferences, breaking news from the show floor, what? live hands-on demos of the hottest games, and expert insight on all of the latest developments straight from the IGN team. If it's at E3, it's coming to our stage. Hello, old friend. Today, we'll take you inside the Microsoft Theater for a look at the future of the Xbox One. Will we find out what's in store for the Halo universe? Hit the road with the latest groundbreaking Forza experience. And check out all the new games you'll be playing on the world's most powerful console, the Xbox One X. And later, stick around for complete coverage of Bethesda's media event. The company behind Fallout, Skyrim, and Wolfenstein is back with a ton of surprises and a wild ride into the apocalypse with the over-the-top Rage 2. IGN's live coverage of E3 2018 starts right now. Live at E3 2018 from first exclusive looks to hands on demos. This is the best place to watch the big show. We're bringing you live coverage and breaking news from all the major players like Xbox, Sony, and Nintendo. Plus, we've got the Fortnite 50v50 Celebrity Pro Am on top of that. Be sure to leave us your comments using the hashtag E3 2018 and tag us at IGN to let us know who you think should win our Game of Show Award. But first, we've got the moment some of you, myself included, have waited years for. It's time to take a look at Soul Calibur 6. Let's welcome producer Motohiro Okubo and his translator, Mikey Mack. Now, I have to say, you guys, as both a huge Witcher fan and a huge Soul Calibur fan, I really want to ask, how did you guys get Geralt in the game? ゲストを入れたいっていうふうに思ってでまああのゲラルトに決めさせていただきました so, I mean, of course, I think fans have come to expect guest characters in the Soul Calibur franchise, and we always wanted to surprise our fans in many ways possible. And I think the Witcher universe had a lot in common, and the characters translated very nicely to the Soul Calibur universe. You guys have had some very cool guests across the years. We've even had Yoda. I never expected that one when it was announced. How do you pick who's going to be the next guest? 
まあ、今お伝えしたように、まあ、ソルキャイバーの世界観にまずすごくやっぱりゲラウトがマッチしていると思いましたし、まあ、あの CG プロジェクトさんの方にもお話をしたところすごくあの前向きに最初からですね回答いただいてその後のあのいろんな話し合いもすごくスムーズにいって、まあ、ゲラウトに決まったという形ですね。I mean, again, it, it's、uh, really how assimilated they would be in the Soul Calibur universe. And really, when we expressed interest to,、uh, to CD Projekt Red, they were very supportive of this venture and said, hey, let's make this work somehow. And then it kind of went from there. So, obviously, we're looking at gameplay right now. It looks like g a r a l t s pretty quick.、Uh, how long did it take you to kind of decide on what his moveset would be? So, this is the moveset. あった中で、まあ、3ヶ月以上はかかってますかね、ムーブセットだけで。I mean, there were a lot of ideas of how to bring him into the Soul Calibur franchise, and I think it really took about like three months to fully lock down his、oh, wow. moveset.、Yeah. <laughs> さらにあの、今回、モーションキャプチャーはですね、あの本作のウィッチャーの,あのゲラルトのあのを実際にやってるアクターさんを日本にお呼びして、モーションキャプチャー撮ったりとかしてあの、実現させています。And even on the、uh, mocap front, we went all out. We brought the, the mocap actor for Geralt in, in The Witcher to Japan in our studio, and then we mocapped him to make sure all the moves look exactly like his character should.、Oh, that quality is so cool to hear.、Um, you also have a stage from The Witcher that's in the game as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's what we've done with CD Projekt. We've done a lot of assets to be able to do it. But if we don't have a stage, we've done a lot of assets. バトルのステージにあのうまくそのまま使えるところもあ,のあったんですけれども、まあ、バトルのステージの設計上ですねいろいろとこう変更してそれも CD プロジェクトさんにあの前向きに OK をいただいて実現させたという形になります。Again, CD プロジェクトは so supportive of this entire partnership so when we said hey we want to make a stage they provided a lot of assets that we can use and they, they allowed us to really kind of rearrange things how we needed to in terms of a soul caliber stage because you can't just take the stage and drop it into the game.、Mm-hmm. I have to say, it is really funny seeing Geralt fight Geralt. <laughs> But to get a little bit broader, what can we expect from all of the characters or the game as a whole in terms of new battle mechanics? I think that the character is in the m s So, a lot of the battle mechanics, we tried to take what they had established in previous iterations of the game and really bring it up to date and drop it into Soul Calibur VI. But, in the past, A, 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 Even more, so there's a lot more to explore. Can you give me some examples of what the biggest changes are or ones that you think that、uh, fans should really be excited about? Well, I think it's a lot of things that I've been doing, but I think it's a lot of things that I've been doing. I think it's a lot of things that I've been doing. それから一番上級者向けにはリーサルヒットっていうシステムも入れたりとかしてるんですけれどもそういったバトルシステムも入れてるんでぜひその辺は楽しんでいただければなというふうに思います。So there have been a lot of changes including、uh, one called Reversal Edge which is really kind of a cool little blocking defensive mechanic and for the more advanced players there is another one called Lethal Hit. So I mean that's, that's you're going to have to go into the game and kind of explore for yourself. Okay.、Um, so can I ask what is your personal favorite addition to Soul Calibur VI? あのそうですね、一番最初のインタビューでは、当時、三剣とソフィーティアしか出してなかったんで、三剣っていうふうにお伝えしたんですけど、あの新キャラもう一つ出してまして、グロー、ダブルセーバーのグローっていうキャラクターがいるんですけど、それも非常にあのこう服の風のなびき方とか、そういったところがあのかっこいいんで、結構、個人的に気に入ってますね。
So when I first answered this question during the, the very first interview that I had, uh, of course, only Sophie and Mitsurugi were shown, so I had to say Mitsurugi at the time. <laughs> but uh, more recently, we were showing Gro now and the dual-wielding character. And I think just the way his clothes kind of blow in the wind and that texture is really kind of fascinating for me. So I really like that, seeing that on the screen. It's good physics. <laughs> yeah. <it's good. laughs> I think uh, the community has actually responded to him pretty positively from what I've seen. Everyone seems really excited. So can you tell us a little about, a bit about him or about his backstory? どんなキャラクターグローのマスクコミュニティが楽しみにしてるっぽいんでまあもう少しグローのそのバックストーリーというかあの彼は北欧の出身で非常にそのクールな形のオーラをまとってで今お伝えしたようにまあいろいろこう
あそうその調整に至ってのこう要素というかやっぱりこうみんなも,ものをそのツールキットを持っている中で新しい要素を追加するとやっぱこうバランスが崩れるんじゃないかっていうあのそんなにですねゲームのバランスそのものっていうのは心配は個人的にはしてないです。あのやっぱりもともとソウルキャリバーのプレイヤーとして楽しんでたトッププレイヤーたちがプロジェクトに結構多く入ってたりとかしてあのバトルの部分っていうのもかなり早い段階でできてたので調整の部分には相当時間かけてるんですねそういう意味ではあ,のあまり心配はしてないです。Development team were involved in Soul Calibur in some form or another along the way, so they really understand the franchise very, very well. So, a lot of the battle mechanics and systems were developed very early on. I think it has a very, a very strong foundation. Right. How long have you guys actually been working on Soul Calibur 6? When did development start? <laughs> Say about three years. That's crazy. Well, it looks awesome so far. We have to cut to break real quick, so let's take a quick break. When we come back, more Soul Calibur 6. Before you find IGN's awesome content anywhere else online, you'll find it right at home on IGN.com. With IGN First, you'll get a sneak peek at never before seen gameplay, exclusive insights from developers, and a whole lot more. NVC Live brings you IGN's Nintendo podcast up close and personal. Engage with other viewers, ask our NVC hosts your burning questions, and become a part of the show. Don't miss out. Find everything first on IGN.com. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? <laughs> We're bringing the memes, gameplay, custom original content, the best user generated videos and art, <laughs> and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The IGN app is the best way to stay up to the minute on what you love. No matter what you play, create the custom feed and filter what you want to watch. Live streams have never been easier to find. With the floating video player on iOS, you can keep watching the live stream as you read other news. World premiere trailers and the biggest games. Download the IGN app from the iOS or Android stores now. Sign up for notifications and we'll alert you the second news breaks. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2018, your hub for all things E3. Right now, we're here with Okubo san from the Soul Calibur team and his translator, Mikey Mack. Now, I really wanted to ask you guys have there been any major changes to some of the fan favorite characters in the game? I know, I'm going to talk about the fact that the character is a character, and the character is a character, and the character is a character. I mean, I mean, we kind of touched on this a little earlier as well, but we really wanted to make a big effort to not change the essence of a character too much and how they feel when you control them. So, the battle of the battle is really the Soul Calibur as a whole. I think that when you I really think when you pick up the controller, it's going to feel like Soul Calibur immediately. So, sorry to cut you off. So, anyone who has played all the games, you know, if I pick up Nightmare, I'm going to know exactly what his moveset is. So, if I pick up Nightmare, I'm going to know exactly what his moveset is. いくつかやっぱりコマンドは変えていてその中でも今回複雑なコマンドっていうのをあのなくしていますやっぱりあの操作による、えー、その格,格闘に対する差っていうというよりかはやっぱり、え
お客さんあのユーザー間でのシンプルな読み合いの部分をもっともっと深く掘り下げたいというふうに思ったので、あの操作自体はかなりあのシンプルにはしています。So, there have been a few changes in the game and some of the moves, but I mean, by and large, I think you'll know what to do. Having said that, we tried to eliminate one of the examples is we tried to eliminate a lot of complex inputs and commands because I think there was definitely、uh, a barrier of execution, which we wanted to play down a lot and let the, the sort of mind games of the two players be the main focus of the stage. It's always a really interesting thing when it comes to fighting games. is... What have you done to make it accessible to newcomers, people who maybe have never played a Soul Calibur game before, without kind of making the longtime series fans feeling a little off the hook? ソルカリバ自体はやっぱりあの今回で6作目ですけど、当然最初のシリーズからいろいろなこうやっぱり変更してきていると思うんですね。で、今回6で何をしたかったか、何をしたか。やっぱりあの憧れの武器をまず振り回す気持ちよさでキャラクターを自由に動き回らせるやっぱりエイトウェイランというのがソウルキャリバーの一つの、えー、カルチャーの一つですので、えー、気持ちよさそこをしっかりとお客さんにあの体感してもらいたいというところはありました。So, this is, of course, the sixth iteration of Soul Calibur. And I think the franchise has undergone many different changes over the years.、Uh, having said that, a big focus for this one was to really let the players pick a character and a weapon that they just really like and let them enjoy it to, the, to their heart's content, really. So, the, the eight way run has been a very important characteristic of Soul Calibur. So, just when you pick up the controller, being able to move around and being able to wield this weapon and make it feel really good, that was kind of what we wanted to achieve. ただしあのそれからやっぱ5まで,で特に5は、えー、剣を持った戦いっていう中での,あのバトルとしての完成度っていうのは非常に高いものにあったのでその気持ちよさの部分と5の完成度格闘の完成度の高さっていうのを両立させるっていうのが今回6のおけるバトルのチャレンジです。I think one of the big challenges for Soul Calibur VI was that in, in 5, you really kind of achieved a very high level of swordsmanship and, and that sort of gameplay that, that players would experience. So, taking, taking that sort of high level of completion and polish and dropping it into six while also making it feel good as the players swing these weapons around, just making those tweaks to. So it feels good as a package is kind of the, the challenge of Soul Calibur VI. Yeah, well, I was really excited when it was announced. I know a lot of people were, and you guys have slowly been rolling out the character announcements. How has the fan community reacted? How have you been seeing the reception? I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a very good thing to do. I think it's a very good t h 今この時代にどうかっこよく見えるだろうっていうところをすごくあのこだわってデザインしてあのお客さんには喜んでいただいてるんじゃないかなと思います。I think overall it's been very, very positive and thank, thank the community very much for that.、Uh, so, timeline wise, you kind of took it way to the beginning, like the first Soul Calibur. And having said that, though, as far as character design goes, you wanted to sort of modernize and update it to what's cool now. So, just balancing these two, it was,、uh, it was fun and the, the community has responded very positively. <laughs> And even the battle portion as well. We've been touring it at a lot of different shows and having people play it and get their hands on it. And I think the overall consensus has been very positive. And you know, everyone's going to have their opinions on certain things or certain systems or mechanics. But overall, I think it's very positive. Yeah, that's what I've seen too. And I did actually ask the community on、uh, Twitter if they had any questions. And what everyone was asking about is what can we expect from the story and the campaign? まず今先ほどもお伝えした通り一番最初の時代背景として時代設定としては一番最初のソウルキャリバーの方にあの戻しています。So I mean, first of all, in terms of the timeline, I kind of teased it earlier, but we're taking it back to around the same timeline as the first Soul Calibur. で当然ソウルキャリバーのその世界観の中で一番重要なところというか根っこのところってソウルキャリバー対ソウルエッジ。まあ、全体悪みたいなやっぱりそこの部分っていうところが一番最初に生まれたのが一番最初の時代であってで
いろいろとやっぱりシリーズを見ていく中でそこの一番最初にそのソルキャイバーとソウルエッジが生まれたところっていうところがあの重要なところにもかかわらずあまりしっかり深く描ききれてなかったなっていうふうに思ったので、まあ、それを今回しっかりとお客様にお伝えできればなっていうふうに思います。And you go, you trace the world of Soul Calibur back to its origins, and it really boils down to Soul Calibur versus Soul Edge, right? The almost good versus evil, if you will. And we really wanted to kind of explore that storyline a little deeper. I think we really we couldn't do it as as well as we would have wanted in the in earlier Soul Calibur. So looking at that story and relationship really was kind of a, a big focus of Soul Calibur Six's story. So does that mean that Siegfried and Nightmare are basically going to be our main characters through the campaign? あのそのソルキャリバタソルエッジの最初の部分っていうところを今回あの新しい展開でお楽しみいただけるんですけど、そこら辺はですねこの後の E3 で公開していくんでまだもうちょっとあの。公開できるまでお待ちください。A lot of that is going to answer itself during E3. Something that I can only tell you to s t a y for. But it's you know Caliber and Edge. That's. It is a very iconic partnership at this point.、Um, can you tell us a little bit about how the campaign is actually going to play out? How are we going to get through it? あのまず一つは時代設定は前に戻るんですけれども。まあ、新しいエピソードなんかも入ってきて新しいキャラクターなんかもそこには入ってきますただ、えー、そのストーリーモードっていうのがどんなようなものになるのかっていうのは、えー、もうちょっとあともう少しだけ待っていただければ分かるようになりますんで。So, <laughs> Again, I, the era, we're bringing it back to the origin and there's going to be certain new, slightly new developments and new episodes in this Story as well as new characters that are going to get involved, but how that all unfolds and how you get to experience it remains to be seen. All right, I see you guys are being intentionally vague. <laughs> I see what's going on. <laughs> all right, let's jump to the character creator. What can we expect from that? あのキャラクターク a c t o r creation is a very important part of the character creation. I'm going to be in the first place. But I'm going to be in the first place. どんなものになるのかっていうのは少しずつ明らかにしていきたいなというふうに思っています。Again, I think the character creation aspect is a very important part of Soul Calibur, and that's about at all I'm at liberty to say right now. So it's an important part, and we focus on it. That you'll you'll see more as as time goes on. Killing me here. In <laughs>、um, Soul Calibur Four is my favorite Soul Calibur,、uh, and I spent a lot of time in the ascension and descension of the towers, and I really tied the character creation system into that to make sure that I had you know the best character. Possible is stuff like that still going to be possible in character creation, and are we going to have an equivalent to tower ascension and descension? I know, もうちょっと待ってください。Hang tight, yes, very soon. All right, let's jump over to esports. What are you guys doing to support the competitive scene? あの先ほど話したようにまず格闘の部分っていうのはもう本当にしっかりと作り込んでますし。十分対戦格闘シーンの中でもあの楽しんでいただけるものにはなっていると思います。So we really the battle system is it's intended to be a very fun experience, but at the same time competitive. あのただこの後 e スポーツの中でソウルキャリバー自体がどのように取り扱われていくかっていうのはやっぱり e スポーツっていうのがそもそもあのユーザーベースというかコミュニティベースで。生まれたものですし、やっぱりコミュニティベースで未だにその運営がされているものだと思いますので、あのまず僕たちとしてはあの面白いものをとにかく提供する、ソウルキャリバーらしいものをしっかりとお客様に提供する、その上で e スポーツシーンの中でソウルキャリバー6が取り上げてもらえれば非常に嬉しいことだと思います。In terms of Soul Calibur's, I guess you can call it role in esports. That's、uh, that's very interesting that you bring that up because I think esports is a very community-driven、mm-hmm. scene. And you look at a lot of esports events even today; it's run by the community by and large. So I think how Soul Calibur is going to fit into that is going to be determined a lot by how the community reacts to it and what we are able to. I think my job is to deliver something fun and engaging that can be used in that scene. Okay, we've only got a couple of minutes left, so I did want to ask. Speaking of esports, do you guys consult pro players or people that you know have played Soul Calibur for a long time when it comes to playtesting? Playtesting on esports is a 
競技性に関してはやっぱりそのプロプレイヤーとこう相談し合ってこうシステムを開発していくのかっていう。あ,のあまり深く詳しくは言えないんですけど一部の,あのプレイヤーの方にはご協力はいただいていますでかつですねあのプレックスソウルの中にはあのあのプレイヤー出身者っていうのも多くいてあのそういうような形で作り上げている感じですね。Um... I can't go into too much detail about this either, but there has been a, a, a select team of very experienced Soul Calibur players, both inside and outside the team, which we consulted. So it's been a very、um, collaborative development, I think. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. That's all the time we have left today. I'm sure we'll find out more very soon. It is time for a break, but there's still so much more ahead.、Uh, more of E3, so don't go anywhere. The IGN app is the best way to stay up to the minute on what you love. No matter what you play, create the custom feed and filter what you want to watch. Live streams have never been easier to find. With the floating video player on iOS, you can keep watching the live stream as you read other news, world premiere trailers, and the biggest games. Download the IGN app from the iOS or Android stores now. Sign up for notifications and we'll alert you the second news breaks. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? <laughs> We're bringing the memes, gameplay, custom original content, the best user generated videos and art, <laughs> and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before you find IGN's awesome content anywhere else online, you'll find it right at home on IGN.com. With IGN First, you'll get a sneak peek at never before seen gameplay, exclusive insights from developers, and a whole lot more. NVC Live brings you IGN's Nintendo podcast up close and personal. Engage with other viewers, ask our NVC hosts your burning questions, and become a part of the show. Don't miss out. Find everything first on IGN.com. If you love video games, we have a lot in common. That's probably why you're watching IGN Live at E3. You know what else we probably have in common? Wanting to watch every press conference E3 has to offer, like Microsoft later today, Ubisoft and PlayStation on Monday, and the Nintendo Showcase and Treehouse Live on Tuesday. But first, let's find out what's been happening with Microsoft and the Xbox since last year's E3. This is it, Xbox One. When Microsoft first revealed the Xbox One, they were met with a skeptical audience. Talk of DRM undermined their every move. They needed to refocus on the thing that mattered most the gamers. In 2017, Microsoft reignited the passion for the Xbox One by giving owners more power, compatibility, and craftsmanship. Xbox Play Anywhere allowed gamers the freedom to seamlessly hop between PC and console. The Netflix like utility of its subscription based Game Pass also scored big with gamers. And the upgraded Xbox One X proved to be the most powerful console on the market. But there's one thing that was missing from Microsoft in 2017. Simply put, exclusive games. 
Nintendo and Sony have been pretty consistent with fantastic first and third party exclusives over the past few years. This is an area Microsoft desperately needs to catch up in, and E3 is the perfect time to do just that. This E3, the Xbox has the potential to regain its footing with some AAA beasts that will make you happy you invested in the Xbox One X. Is this the year we see the return of Master Chief in a new Halo game? Will the Locust Horde wreak havoc on our senses in a new Gears of War? Are the rumors of Perfect Dark and Fable true? This E3, the Xbox is locked, the games are loaded. It's go time. And now to help me break down all things Xbox, the IGN Unlocked crew, Brandon Tyrell, Miranda Sanchez, and Ryan McCaffrey. First things first, guys, Halo 6, how are we going to see it? Yes. I hope so. <laughs> it is time. This is the longest we've ever gone without a Halo teaser of some kind. Uh, usually we get in year two between the three-year gaps between the mainline Halo games, we get the, you know, the, the tone piece, the trailer. Uh, we haven't had that. This is year three it is time to see the next Halo. You know, I have faith, like that's good. Time is good sometimes, especially with what happened with Halo 5 and the reception with its story. Like they really need to nail down Master Chief in this next one and they really need to reveal him big, right? That's what I was gonna say for anyone watching who isn't familiar with kind of the timeline, what has happened since Halo 5? It's basically been that people were a little bit angry about the story being focused on Locke, really wanted to see more of the Chief, and it seems like 343 has kind of been reworking the story leading into 6. Yeah, I think we're going to see that Halo 6 announcement, and I think uh, 343 is going to walk it back and make it a very Chief-centric reveal, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's a big old trailer or a teaser of some sort, uh, or you know, having someone from 343 come out to talk about the tone of the, the game and where, uh, where we're going to find Chief now. Um, I think this is going to be the one, the, this is going to be the re reveal that reminds people like what Halo is. I would be very surprised if we see any other main characters besides <laughs> Master Chief, yeah. uh, at least on the good guy side. Yeah. What do you want to see? Uh, it's well, a hard question to answer, I know, because it's like <laughs> all of it? <laughs> I, I know. Um, the, the legendary ending of Halo 5 hinted at another Halo, so I think the, the big cool thing 6 could and probably will do that I'd love to see a, a, a hint at would be finally seeing everything in the sandbox at once. The Covenant, the Prometheans, mm. and the Flood. You know, what, what does a Flood-infected Promethean look like and fight uh, like? That's gonna be pretty That's cool. terrifying. Yeah, yep. one, of the great, one of the great things about the Halo series is you have all these factions and you have all these different side uh, points of view and they're all vying together. And, um, you know, Bungie, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 343 does a really good job at taking all those factions and putting them together in, in fun ways that you can engage with, you know? And I, I want to see more of that from this. And, of course, the story beats on it are, are just super important. Uh, and I really want to see them get back to that sort of Master Chief versus the universe vibe that we right. get. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget, too, this is going to be the first mainline Halo that can really be built <coughs> for the Xbox One X, or at least True. built Honestly. with it in mind. So we could see a potentially a, a really, you know, a nice step up in the in what Halo already has great presentation. Halo has already right. always looked great, sounded great, yeah. and that can get taken up uh, another notch here. Mm -hmm. One thing I really do want to see is an emphasis on co-op again. I mean, mm -hmm. I that really hurt. I, them oh, I think they learned that lesson. Yeah, yeah, so I hope that they maybe integrate that in some really unique way. Yeah, split so screen yeah. for sure has got to be back. I doubt we'll necessarily see that today. Yeah. But. It'd be a weird teaser trailer. It's like in split screen the whole <laughs> yeah. time. That'd be really odd. But well, that'd be we, really we funny. you wanted this. So. <laughs> I think a good mention or a, a an idea of them saying, hey, we have listened to everything you have said about Halo 5 yeah. and we want to improve on that. Do you think we'll get a release date? I don't uh. think so. Uh, it seems like it's, it's, <laughs> it's at this point where Halo is in such a delicate place right now. <laughs> I think that they're going to take uh, as much time as they need to make sure that it delivers what I think everyone expects from a Halo game. I do think w the closest we'd get might be a season. A window. That's uh, what I'm expecting. Yeah. Spring 2019. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't think it'll be this year because we've yet to see anything. Yeah. I, agree. I can't that'd, imagine. That'd be like a Bethesda. They'd just be yeah. like, and it's out now. <laughs> That's no, not Microsoft's thing. No. So. And one more thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a window. And I, and I, yeah, I think this, this could be the first mainline Halo that doesn't ship in the holiday season, I you think know, so. September onwards. Right, I think we'll just get a year. Yeah. Just a year. Well, I hope it's next year. <laughs> Me too. Sure hope so. Yeah, I feel like it'll be next year. How about multiplayer? What do you guys want from that? <clears throat> Well, the, Halo the, the, 5 was incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. 
don't fix what ain't broken. That's yeah. part That's, of it. As, it. Halo 5 was a tale of two games to me. Uh, 5, in my opinion, has the strongest multiplayer mechanics since Halo 2. Uh, I know there are people that disagree with me on that. but betraying Halo 2 but, there, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> since Halo, yeah, not I know. stronger than nothing beats Halo 2. <laughs> but then on the single-player side, it was, in my opinion, the weakest of yeah. the mainline games. So um, you, I, I just like to see big team battle be more... Um, you know, we didn't really get that addressed at launch with 5. They added some to that after. So right. really, it's just building on the already very strong strengths of yeah. Halo 5 it in the multiplayer It seems unlikely department. that we'll get a multiplayer teaser or anything like that today as well. Yeah, I think they really just need to nail down that narrative. I, I think, think so too. I, I agree. I think, hey, we're working on it. It's going to be great. Like, that's all we need right now. Yeah. And I think that's all we'll get right now. How about Gears of War 5? This one seems very likely to me. Yeah. Yes, I think that's an easy introduction here, right? Because it's been a few years since we had four, and it was on a, left on a very big cliffhanger, and I think it's just an easy reveal for them to do, and a safe one, too, because we know it's coming, and we're all, at least I'm very excited about it, so. Yeah, Alana, I mean, you are probably our biggest Gears of War super fan in the office. Mm -hmm. You've done cosplay. You've played the games extensively. Where do you want to see... Five go. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, what do I want from a Gears of War trailer? I just want one of those really depressing songs they always have. <laughs> <laughs> have their teasers are like, it's like a weird cut with like ash yeah, falling. Gary and they just, Jules, yeah, mad yes, in the exactly. Yeah. And it's so dramatic. Like, that's what I want again. <laughs> with the ending of four, do you think that they would kind of skew toward that? I felt like four is maybe a tad more lighthearted, even though it did touch on like heavy yeah. themes. And I feel still like the ending of four, good. I guess we're just kind of dancing around in case anyone hasn't played it. It's yeah, for sure. Messed up. I mean, it is. It's heavy. Yeah. It's alluding to something really neat and potentially that they will explore in five. Mm. You know, um, I've read all the comics and all the books, and yeah. I, I really do find the humanity side of Gears of War really, really interesting and the stuff right. that happened, you know, when they tried to repopulate and all of that. And we did see a little bit of that in the first trailer for Gears 4, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we know, you know, they're basically outcasts, the team that we're following now. And I, I think that concept is really interesting. Where they fit into society is really interesting. So that's why I want that depressing human I thought, trailer. <laughs> yeah. I thought uh, Gears of War 4 did a, just a tremendous job of. Of, of the the generational handoff, yes. much right. like Star Wars uh, Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, and and I just what I do hope though is I do love the new crew. Uh, I think they're great, but I I hope we're not going to leave Marcus. Please don't uh, kill and Marcus and, and, Phoenix. Uh, and the remaining think... members uh, of his team behind. So I, I hope that, I hope we us. still have a, a joint sort of multi generational uh, effort going on. I think here. with how Gears of War Four progressed, they made it clear that they don't want to do that. That yeah. this is a joint effort. This isn't yeah. them leaving the old generation behind. It's right. them working together to make the world better. Marcus can't go back to the farm yet. There's still more work <laughs> to be done. I mean, though. they destroyed it. <laughs> oh, my tomatoes. That was, that was my favorite thing, I think, of that entire game. Oh, I actually on. laughed I out loud so when much. I played that part of the game. But, I mean, yeah, for me, it's just like, I just want ATs. And what I'm yeah. expecting, and we've spoken a little bit about this, is that they either open with Halo or Gears and close with Halo or Gears. So I think we'll, we'll have them, like, top and tail. And, and, you know, it's the most popular franchises that Microsoft have at this point. I'd be shocked if that's not. Now, and Gears sure. 5 uh, has also generally been on the mainline games have been on a three-year development yeah. cycle. So that would suggest a, the teaser this year. And I wonder if 2019 we might see Halo oh. in the spring and Gears <laughs> of War 5 in the fall. You know what? I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. I'm totally cool. I mean, hey, awesome. it worked great for Nintendo last yeah. year, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, I mean, that's great, but that is that is all your eggs in 2019, and then what happens in 2020 or 2021? Well, that's what this conference needs to tell us. Let's Hopefully, sure. we'll have a ton more stuff. But I did want to talk about some of the rumors that have come out of Gears of War. We heard that there might be a Gears Battle Royale of some kind. We have heard a lot about Battle Royale. This we year. have already, six yeah. minutes into the first conference. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but we've also heard about a Gears of War-style RTS, like, uh, sorry, like a Halo Wars style, which I'm calling Gears of War Wars. Um, <laughs> yeah. Gears, Gears of War Wars, I like yeah. it. Which I actually think, I didn't play Halo Wars, Ryan, you did. It's, it's excellent. It's, it's really a, good. I mean, you know, Halo, as, as some may know, veteran fans may know, Halo was originally a strategy game, mm -hmm. like way, way back. Uh, so it was inherently a good fit for it. But I think Gears could, could work great like that, too. There's An XCOM-type turn-based yeah. thing. Great units, like definitely, for the Brumax. What, what, yeah. what would the Hammer of Dawn look like? Right. Like, I'm actually awesome. super on board with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me awesome. too. Yeah. Especially if only one person can use it as, as a time, at a time, because it's satellite-based, you know? Like, yeah. one person gets the Hammer of Dawn yeah. at one point, you know, like... I, I just feel like it would be really exciting, but I, how likely do you think that stuff is? I mean, a third-person cover shooter, like, to me, the idea of an XCOM style thing, I, I think, did you just say XCOM? That sounds like a really awesome 
like it, it fits so perfectly because you're already hiding behind stuff, so you're moving your characters around, um, and this this whole world is just perfect for that. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, um, but I still think three Gears announcements in one conference. We know it's a little bit longer this year. It sounds like it's a longer conference, but yeah. it seems unlikely to me. Yeah, that seems like a lot just on Gears. Like I know it's really popular, but that's also a lot for yeah. Gears 4. On the other hand, Microsoft, you know, this is the year I think that we've talked on Unlocked, our regular weekly show. They need to fire every bullet they have That's in the true. chamber this year. I'm, I'm so excited about this press conference this Me year. Too. Like, you know, I'm excited every year, but I feel like this one, Brandon, we've spoken about this a bunch. Mm -hmm. It's like the one where they really have to show us that they are dedicated to exclusives and games because they've been talking that big talk of like, yeah, we've shifted our focus. We're starting a new studio. Playground's got a new team. We know all of this stuff is happening. It's like, I want you to prove it to me this year, you yeah, know? That, that's yeah. right. I think uh, every year there's the potential for surprises in every conference, right? But I don't know what it is, something in the air or whatever it is, but this feels <laughs> like Microsoft's year to open something up and just wow us, you know? They do have that new Santa Monica studio coming. They do have a lot of stuff coming. Um, so I want to see it all. <laughs> I totally agree. And it is time for a quick break, but we'll be right back with PUBG and later the Xbox E3 briefing. The IGN app is the best way to stay up to the minute on what you love. No matter what you play, create the custom feed and filter what you want to watch. Live streams have never been easier to find. With a floating video player on iOS, you can keep watching the live stream as you read other news. World premiere trailers and the biggest games. Download the IGN app from the iOS or Android stores now. Sign up for notifications and we'll alert you the second news breaks. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? <laughs> We're bringing the memes, gameplay, custom original content, the best user-generated videos and art, <laughs> and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before you find IGN's awesome content anywhere else online, you'll find it right at home on IGN.com. With IGN First, you'll get a sneak peek at never-before-seen gameplay, exclusive insights from developers, and a whole lot more. NVC Live brings you IGN's Nintendo podcast up close and personal. Engage with other viewers, ask our NVC hosts your burning questions, and become a part of the show. Don't miss out. Find everything first on IGN.com. IGN Live at E3 2018 is back. Thanks for sticking around, and you'll be glad you did, because up next, we've got the Xbox E3 briefing. But first, let's take a look at the franchise that put Battle Royale gaming on the map and took the Xbox One by a storm. This is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. So the last major update to PUBG on Xbox One was the addition of the Miramar map, that desert map. Uh, and then on PC, they've been testing a smaller map, which was originally called Savage and is now called Sonok. So that's been in testing, but uh, hasn't come out yet. It's easy to forget how big of a game PUBG still is because Fortnite is dominating this Battle Royale conversation right now. Everyone's making Battle Royale games. Call of Duty is making a Battle Royale mode. Uh, but. PUBG is still the most played game on Steam by far. It, it's not even close. I think what we can expect from PUBG at E3 this year is probably a map reveal. There's one that they've been talking about for a while set in the Baltic Sea. It's going to be probably a snowy map. I'm, I'm sure we'll get a glimpse of that at least. Uh, we'll probably also see a release date for Sonok, that smaller map. 
And maybe if we're getting really crazy here, we'll, uh, we'll see a PlayStation announcement PS4 on the Sony stage, but I think that's probably a year off still. a very polite man in a bow tie chat about a battle royale game <laughs> joining me once again we have Brandon Tyrell Miranda Sanchez and Ryan to talk all things Xbox guys it's really close I'm very excited right now counting the minutes yeah so the next thing that I want to talk about was crackdown yeah we it just got delayed mm, yes we don't know when it's coming out but I'm assuming we're definitely going to see it this year hopefully we see a lot of gameplay yeah, I mean, February 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, will it be on February 22nd? Same with Days Gone and Anthem. Anthem. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah, the day's getting But, uh, yeah, so February, which is, you know, whether, whether there's a sort of production time that's needed or, or not, probably smart because this, hot, this fall season is so packed. Crackdown 3, you know, it's, it's a single-platform title. Uh, why not just let it, just get it into early 2019 where there's a little, you know, there's fewer Red Deads in, uh, yeah. in February of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So I just can't wait to see what's going on with it. You know, we, we got to, I played single player for about 10 minutes just messing around in the sandbox and two player co-op, same thing, uh, behind closed doors last year. It, and it was fun. It didn't, you know, it didn't quite look the part uh, yeah. in, in, as sort of an Xbox One X flagship title, mm -hmm. which it was at the time. Uh, before the delay, but you know it was still fun, and so now you know I think everybody wants to see the the vision of that cloud-based Azure-powered wow. dis multiplayer destruction right. fulfilled. Will we see that in some form or another on the conference today? That's that's a big question for me about Crackdown. Are you guys still excited about it? <clears throat> um, I always expect another delay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of yeah. what I'm holding my breath for, right? Like until they put a firm release date on that. Again, and <laughs> you know, I'm, just I'm still excited to see more gameplay. I've yeah. always really liked Crackdown. I also like old games of that style. Prototype stands for full. I really yeah. love that kind of superhero right. feeling in sure. a game. But I keep being like, what if it gets canceled? Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I think at this point they can't, right? Like right. they just gotta. They're figure it out. Get yes. They're pot committed. I think yeah. it'd be really nice to have an update and seeing like what <coughs> were they working on? Like what exactly have they used all this ex extra time for? Mm -hmm. Like we know what the problems were, but it'd be kind of cool to see them be very transparent about that. Um, I was talking to some devs before about extra time with games and delays, and like my perception is, hey, you guys needed that time, and I'm sure you made the most of it. And they're like, well, sometimes like it was too much time, and we just you know maybe didn't need that. Interesting. And so like sometimes when you, you kind of get your own head of th about things when you're creating stuff, right? I do want to say, like, so. props to Microsoft for letting them have yes. that extra time rather sure. than yeah. putting out a broken product. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, just, I'd call myself cautiously optimistic right. on, on Crackdown 3. I can't, I can't honestly sit here and say I'm crazy pumped for it and I can't right. wait to see it. No. I hope today changes that. Yeah, me too. But, I, yeah, I mean, it, they've had plenty of time. We'll see what happens. But I just, yeah, I mean, the, the idea of, of actually, like, wrecking entire chunks of a, of, of a skyscraper-filled city. Heck if yeah. If they can pull that off and make, make that fun in a multiplayer setting, that's great. We don't have anything like that. That would be yeah. wonderful. Brandon, how about you? Um, I'm, I'm in the same boat with Ryan. I can't sit here and say that I'm, I'm super pumped for Crackdown because the last time I saw and actually played last year as well at, at E3, um, the last experience I have with Crackdown, I was a little underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, and we just haven't seen much out of it. So um, I'm curious more than optimistic. I, I'm curious to see what they're doing. Uh, we know this series can be awesome. It has been before. Um, so as soon as the lights go up and the conference starts, I'm expecting a Crackdown trailer showing us those sweet multiplayer number crunching in the cloud as everything falls <laughs> apart. The power um, of the cloud. <laughs> may, maybe some gameplay, but like we need a wow trailer. Like, do yeah. you, you remember driving the semi-truck into the skyscraper, the first reveal trailer? Yeah. Um, we need one of those. And I think going I into it, it, you know, not being overexcited is always a good idea for every conference, uh, yeah. but I'm breaking my own rule because I'm really excited about the idea of Fable coming back. Ooh. Ooh. We don't know how likely this one is. It's just been rumored. Playground Games, the creators of Forza Horizon, right. actually um, have a separate team. They've been hiring for an open-world action RPG, which to me sounds like, hey, Fable. They are a UK studio, so mm -hmm. they'll still have that Fable humor, hopefully. Rumor was recently as well that, that uh, there was some right. fairly strong circumstantial evidence that Microsoft is buying Playground Games, which would which would all but cement the idea that uh, yeah. that second team is going to be working on a Microsoft property, and that Microsoft property would be Fable. And uh, if, if 
Playground's second team can bring half the, the talent to Fable that they have brought to Forza Horizon. Mm. It's going to be real good because Forza Horizon, which, by the way, I also expect to see today because it's yeah, their sure. year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Horizon is, is it, you and I talk all the time, Alana, it's, it's the best car game period of the last at least five years. Completely agree. So if Fable, if, if Fable has anywhere near the level of, of talent involved, uh, it's, it has, stands a chance to really bring Fable back in a huge, significant, amazing way. Well, we know they hired people yeah, from, from pretty prolific studios who have a lot of experience working on open world games and open world RPGs, so I'm confident by that. It's just like, are they working on Fable? Are we going to see it today? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm trying not to get my hopes up. I'm oh. so excited. But I what think, is it going to be? Well, I'm expecting if it is, they were hiring as recently as January, probably yeah. even sooner than that or closer than that, rather. Um, I'm, I'm expecting that if we do see it, we just see a tease, maybe like an Albion logo, like something related to like a color skate, a symbol. Like I don't really know, but I don't think there's gameplay ready for this. Yep, I think all. that would make a lot more sense, especially if they're still getting that team ready. And I have a lot of confidence in Playgrounds to do it right as well. If they do do this, which we all hope for for sure. I think the one thing we will learn today, if there is indeed a Fable teaser, which I agree, I think there will be, because uh, if, if that studio purchase rumor is indeed yeah. accurate, you don't just say that at E3. You say, yeah. well, we bought them and they're doing Fable. Yeah. Exactly. I think we get, at the very least, confirmation of whether it's Fable 4 or a reboot. I you know, I think we'll see like a logo, you know, yeah. uh, some fable -y music and a logo which will answer the question of Fable 4 or are we, do, are we going down the reboot route? Yeah. I think it is one of the few games I would really like a reboot for. Yeah, me too. I like all the Fable games. The Fable 1 is my favorite. The Lost Chapter specifically is my favorite. And I like that time period the most as yeah. well. So I'm hoping we can go back there, but... I don't we'll even get that much detail today. Yeah, not today. <laughs> I agree. If any. I, if it's I, even real. I agree, yeah. and I'm dating myself a little, but I actually remember the first trailer for the first Fable game. Project Ego. The Project oh, yeah. Ego. And yeah. it opened with shots, like uh, sweeping shots of Albion and that uh, fairy tale music that just puts you yeah. in the mood for that atmosphere. Uh, I, <sighs> that's what I want to see. That's that's the most I'm going to get my hopes up for today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave a throwaway comment that I also really want to see a perfect dark because that's vaguely been rumored, but we have no substantial yeah. evidence that that's happening. Either, so I'm just going to throw that out there. But one game that we are expecting to see this year, at the very least, and I'm thinking it's going to be on Microsoft stage, is Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. That is the next game from CD Projekt Red, who obviously made The Witcher 3, which is world-renowned as one of the Absolutely. best Absolutely. IGN's ever made. 2015 game of the year. It's an incredible game. Uh, do you guys think that it's likely that we'll see Cyberpunk on Xbox's stage? The Witcher 3 obviously was on PS4, PC as well. The Witcher 2 was PC and 360. And then The Witcher 1 was uh, originally a PC game. So it's, they, they have that relationship history yeah, already. Forth, right. sure. uh, I, I would shake the Magic 8 ball and it would say yes. I think, think so? I think, it's, I think that is going to happen because uh, CD Projekt Red is, has really been, <laughs> been teasing a lot yeah. that they've, yeah. got a, they've got a presence at this year's E3. And uh, we've been waiting for Cyberpunk for actual years We don't even now. know what it is. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. think it is time, and I think mm. Microsoft stage is the place we will see it unveiled. But that's so amazing that a studio with, based on their pedigree and a CGI trailer from three years ago, <laughs> can create such fervor over something we've never seen, never played. They tweeted beep boop, and everyone was like, ah! <laughs> I mean, we just know what they For can all we do. Know. Yeah. They have that confidence, because yeah. we, they've proven to us that we should have that confidence. Which well, is crazy, because the first Witcher game wasn't really that good. The Witcher 2 I really liked, but it was sort of niche, and then I, The Witcher I 3 agree. was just like, oh boy, yeah. you the, guys are good. You could see what they were doing yeah. with Witcher 3 in Witcher 2. Yeah. Like those, the seeds for that were mm -hmm. there. Um, but for all we know, their presence at E3 is an expansion for Gwent. So let's. <laughs> How? Oh, don't temper. say that. Don't, yeah, don't, don't break it. my heart that way. Let's temper our expectations. I do think if, if Cyberpunk is here, uh, or whatever it's called, uh, Microsoft will have it. I hope that we see some gameplay. It's time for that. I don't know when the game is going to come out. Um, I would think next year as well, but now I'm getting terrified of next year. Like, we thought this year was a big I know, deal. I know. Like, if that game gets a release date for next year as well, just please let it be later in the year. We're at that point in the generation, though. You know, we saw this with the yeah. Xbox 360 generation, where towards this sort of ladder, you know, we're what, four or five, five years in now, uh, where it's just, it's peak game efficiency. We have yeah. all these, not only tons of games, but great games. Developers have the handle on the hardware. Yep. They've, they've, they've dialed in whatever franchise they're working on. Uh, we're talking about a new IP here, but yeah, I mean, it's, we're, in that, we're in the zone, man, for the, for the, the best that we're going to see from this generation. It's all happening now. Right, I see Cyberpunk more as a fall game, for sure. I think they have yeah. 
or a late year game. Like it could be yeah. next year's Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I, hope, I always forget what fall is being. Oh, yeah, so like, fall, autumn, fall, like, not this year, but different definitely. Times of year, it's very confusing to Later me. on, for sure. Yeah, well, I, I wonder if a lot of the stuff we're going to see announced this year at every conference is going to be some of the last games we will see on this console generation full stop. This actually might be the first year that we'll see games that are announced for next-gen consoles too, which is exciting. I think Fable's one of those games. Personally. Probably. Do you think they'll announce it that way? No. No, I no, think no, it's, no. it's going to be like Breath of the Wild, right? Where things are announced, but then slowly re you know what comes out next. Yeah. Next yeah, because I think uh, for this generation, it was Watch Dogs. Uh, Star was... Wars 1313 prior oh. to its oh. cancellation. Oh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Watch Dogs was next generation consoles, and that was the year before launch. So it's, it's yes. something that, you know, I, I'm excited about even hearing, you know, hints of that. Not that I feel like I'm ready yet, but okay. It is time <laughs> for a quick break, everyone. But stick around because we're just moments away from the Xbox E3 briefing. I hope you're all as excited as I am. Not only is IGN the world's biggest media brand for games and entertainment, but we also have a team of some of the world's biggest fans of your favorite franchises. From breaking news and exclusives, never before seen looks at movies and games, to reviews, let's plays, and live streams, IGN brings you all the coverage you need no matter where you are. Whether you're on IGN.com, the IGN app, YouTube, Facebook, or Snapchat, we've always got you covered. IGN, the number one source for all games and entertainment fans worldwide. I think we can all agree that teamwork is vital to any important partnership. Thankfully, E3 Live 2018 is brought to you by Sicario Day of the Soldado in theaters June 29th. Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin are teaming up again to fight the cartels. And for one of them, it gets personal. Like friends turned into enemies personal. See what I mean in this exclusive clip. Turning you loose? How loose? No rules this time. Your assignment is to kidnap Isabel, the daughter of a cartel leader. <laughs> Try to make it look like another cartel is responsible for the kidnapping. It's your chance to get even for your family. Alejandro's daughter was kidnapped and executed. And here he is kidnapping a young girl who's about the same age. I know who you are. You're the attorney whose family they killed. And now you hunt them. Adios. Not they. My father. She becomes a pawn in their chess game. We can't risk her falling into the wrong hands. Clean the scene. That relationship changes something in him. He starts to have compassion towards the daughter of his enemy. You gotta get rid of her. I can't do that. Good luck. Luck doesn't live on this side of the border. from the Xbox conference to Brandon, Miranda, and Ryan. I'm really sorry if I have to cut any of you off because the conference is live. It could happen pretty much any second now. Yeah. But one thing that I wanted to ask you guys about, do you think Splinter Cell is going to show up? Please. Uh, oh, I think please. the answer there is, is no. sort of a no. Yeah. Please. I'm going to say no. I think so because of that Wildlands tease. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what makes me like really hold out hope. And I love the franchise, Ryan. I know you're a huge fan. Big time. It would uh, be really nice. Yeah, I, I need more Michael Ironside. Uh, Sam Fisher in my life. All right, it's I, have to, I have to cut you off oh. right now. Apparently, the conference is what? starting, so stay tuned for our post show right after this. E3 2018 briefing.
please welcome the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. Master Chief on his greatest adventure yet to save humanity. We are now at a moment of exceptional creativity in gaming. We can't wait to show you what Creativity Unleashed looks like for you. So to all the gamers around the world, across time zones and languages, to every single person watching us on TV and on Mixer, and to our largest ever live audience, the thousands of you with us right here in the Microsoft Theater. Welcome to E3 2018. I'd like to personally thank everyone who's joining us from FanFest. A hundred percent of the proceeds from your FanFest tickets are going to Gamers Outreach. Thanks to you, kids in children's hospitals get to game with their friends in their favorite worlds. It's a great cause. That's what I appreciate most about gaming. Gaming brings us together. Gaming connects us. It inspires our truest cooperation. It creates some of our fondest memories of competition and our deepest conversations about the stories within games. Most of all, Gaming fosters real community. It reaches across age, ability, race, gender, and geography. This is why I've always believed, and will always believe, that gaming is the great unifier. And what unifies us is our shared love of this art form. Legendary characters who captivate us. Not just for 10 hours, but for 10, 20, 30 years bold stories that inspire the hero within us, iconic worlds that are so richly imagined we feel excitement in the air and danger on the seas. As gamers, we are at a momentous time where creative vision and cutting-edge technology together are delivering the art form we love. So, for months, our teams and I have traveled the world meeting developers from Japan to Poland, from the UK to the Ukraine, from big studios to single developers, creators who seize the full power and potential of Xbox One to express their most daring vision for games. Today, we've curated a bold showcase of their best work, and ours, 50 games. 18 titles with exclusivity, and 15 world premieres. Some will be first-timers on this stage, and others will be first-timers on any stage. All are imagined by the industry's greatest talents. All demonstrate what true artisans can create. Mind-blowing art, immersive sound effects, breathtaking worlds. So let's jump in. Exclusive.
World Premiere. your fate just yet. Some time has passed since I found you. Your master still lives. They'll soon make use of his bloodline. The limb you have lost will give way to something more useful. You'll learn to appreciate its worth. Please welcome, from Bethesda Game Studios, Todd Howard. How's everybody doing? Oh, it's great to see everybody again. You know, actually, the Bethesda event is a few hours right after this across the street. And uh, Phil said to me, I'm having a few friends over. Why don't you uh, stop by? And look, I know Phil is really, really charming. Um, but damn, he's got a lot of friends. <laughs> and the good news is, you're our friends too. We've had an incredible 16-year history with Xbox going all the way back to the original with Morrowind. Now backwards compatible. And that goes all the way to bringing mods to consoles with Fallout 4. And now we are bringing the Fallout universe to Xbox Game Pass with Fallout 4 launching today. And hey, since we're here, we thought we'd give all of you an exclusive World premiere, first look at Fallout 76. Yes, Fallout 76 is a prequel to all the other games, and it is our biggest one yet. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. Set in the hills of West Virginia, you are one of the first to emerge into an untamed and very different wasteland.
300 years after our great nation began, we gather together to honor the completion of Vault 76. This sprawling underground shelter may have been engineered by Vault Tech, but it was built by you. So that if the bombs do come, our way of life will endure. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is all there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like the breeze. Country roads, take me home. When the fighting has stopped and the fallout has settled, you must rebuild. Not just walls, not just buildings, but hearts and minds, and ultimately, America itself. In Vault 76, our future begins. World premiere. Spirit of my silence, I can hear you, but I'm afraid to be near you, and I don't know where to begin, and I don't know where to begin. It's just me, Captain Spirit. to the Flying Fortress. Have you spotted the snowman, sir? Not yet. Keep me posted. Chris, breakfast. Okay, Dad. You're drinking beer? I don't need a lecture from my son. I always get picked last for the team at school, and they never throw the ball to me. They can't tell stories like you can, can they? No way. Start the launch. Too late! This time, you won't get away from me. I miss Mom's smile. Me too. Nobody's friend. You're probably gonna change the world. Just I hope so. I know so. But I really Captain Spirit is here! I have the gear of vision. The awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. Download for free from June 26th. Exclusive. Welcome to Crackdown 3, the only game built like me. Big, beautiful, like a skyscraper, falling at your face. If you want to play on my level, follow my lead. Somebody give me my jam. It's all about getting the jump on the enemy. No building is too high. 60 stories up, incoming. You gotta build up that raw power. Grab more, grow more. Nama, nama, nama. Big, bigger, Jackson! Then you need that fire power. Homing rocket gun, bullseye. Vortex cannon, see ya. Graviton tether. Have you two met? And the most powerful weapon of all, me. And then I roll out like a boss. 
I can push off fools, pull up the side of a building, or even bust out my very own tank. Oh, yeah. Boom, shakalaka! Man, these bad guys just won't quit. They got mad, mad scientists, and mad a master plan. Here we go! The hits just keep on coming. <laughs> And the skies rained missiles, and the ground burned to ash, and the seas boiled, and people turned into shadows. So let us not fear the heretics at our door. Even with their iron steeds standing before us, stinking of machine oil, and shining its heretical light upon us, Remember, most of the country has been destroyed or occupied. Even those who speak our language might be enemies, by conviction or out of fear. We will not falter! Let us steel ourselves against them! For this is our hour of glory! Amen! Let's move out, Artyom. Blood, they will get it. We'll cross it no matter what those fanatics think. Metro had me at its gritty visuals, brutal landscapes, and its mystery of the ruins above ground. What I love about our art form is the vast range of creative expression, from grim post-apocalyptic battles to hand-painted spirit guardians. Whatever world these creators build, whatever story they tell, whatever sound effects they use, we will work with creators to guarantee that their games look and play best on Xbox One. Like this next game, generations have loved role-playing games from Inventive Studios in Japan. Our next game is the latest in a legendary series. For the first time ever on Xbox, Kingdom Hearts.
It's cold! Guess he's too used to the beach. Hey, Islander, what can I say? Look, even the sea's turning to ice. Wow. A walking, talking snowman. You really are alive. Hello. Olaf, are these your friends? Hmm? Nope. Never met him. Don't know anyone blue, green, or who's on these spikes. hurt people. This is my home now. I can't go back. I don't want to hurt anyone. Hark! Look out! Things they don't really Roxas does exist. His heart's inside my heart. The other Twilight Town is just data. So what will Elsa accept? Light or darkness? I know I want to know. Well, good for you, but guess what? I won't let her fall to darkness. This keyblade. Is that? Mickey. You're too late. Exclusive. You needn't cower in the doorway. I actually like meeting new people. Uh, besides, the conversation with my friend here has reached a bit of an impasse. I think you just need a moment to cool off. Now, I sense that you brought me something to inspect. Show me. Oh. The waves of change roll throughout the seas, and a new land is revealed. The Forsaken Shores. A place of darkness, where fire and ash consume all. And from the depths, skeleton crews will rise to curse the seas. An ancient evil set loose upon the Sea of Thieves. You have delivered unto me a portent of two most terrible. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> you just wanted to know how much it was worth, didn't you? Fine, I'll give you ten for it. Yes, <laughs> 
Jeg har altid syntes, at landet deres var vakkert og forstyrrende. Da jeg kom hit som barn, fortalte det mig historier om skarpninger og monster. <laughs> Vi ved, at nogen er derude. Og du fortæller mig, hvem det er. Exclusive world premiere. Welcome from Playground Games, Ralph Fulton. Thank you so much. It is fantastic to be here today. I am excited to show you the world premiere of Forza Horizon 4, set in beautiful, historic Britain. Forza Horizon 4 features dynamic seasons in a shared open world, and seasons change everything. Let me introduce you to some of our team who will be helping demo the game today. Please welcome Bill, who is online with a few friends in the beautiful English countryside. He has chosen the incredible new McLaren Senna. And say hi to Solomon, who is hanging out with his buddies on the streets of Scotland's capital, Edinburgh. So Solomon is driving the Hoonigan Ford Focus. And please welcome Andy, whose off-road buggy is perfect for taking jumps, scaling rocky terrain, and having fun on the coastline of Britain. But first, let's join Rebecca. She is enjoying the summer in her highly customized Nissan Silvia. The sun is out, the sky is blue, and it's the perfect day for a drive. Forza Horizon 4's Britain is a shared open world. When you play, you play with the entire community. And that means the other drivers you'll meet in the game will be real people with all the variety, spontaneity, and fun that real people bring. Let's join Bill. He's in the same shared world as Rebecca, driving at speeds made even more thrilling on Xbox One X by the brand new 60 FPS mode. 
Meanwhile, Andy is bouncing around the dunes nearby. As you can see, Horizon 4 is still full of action-packed fun. And now we're going to show you how seasons change everything. In Horizon 4, every season changes the world around you, with each bringing its own unique beauty and unique gameplay. One of the great things about this shared world is that it's easy to interact with the people you meet. Here, Solomon and Rebecca use the new quick chat feature on the D-pad to start a new friendship. It looks like Rebecca has found some like-minded friends. It's great to play solo, but it's better to play with others. Horizon 4 lets you seamlessly enter co-op from within the game world. Seasons, time of day, and weather conditions are dynamic, but they are synchronized for every player, so the entire community will experience them at the same time. Now, as much as we'd all love to sit and watch the sun go down together, let's see how this scene looks in winter. The entire open world changes beyond recognition. In winter, the lake has frozen solid, and previously inaccessible areas can be reached. The trees have entirely lost their leaves, and snow and ice covered the terrain. The visuals and the driving experience couldn't be more different. And now a blimp has appeared over the ice to signal the start of a new world event. Sportsathon Live invites the entire community to come together and cooperate to win big rewards. And while they head off to the event, I'd like to show you how the world of Forza Horizon 4 looks in spring. Once again, the world changes completely with the seasons, bringing new driving experiences, new gameplay, and new events across the whole world. Every season, there are new reasons to play Forza Horizon 4, and the huge, creative, fun-loving Horizon community will be there to enjoy them with you. Today, you've seen a completely new take on Horizon. In Forza Horizon 4, you will live in a vast, beautiful world in which dynamic seasons change everything. Forza Horizon 4 is coming to Xbox One and Windows 10 on October 2nd, and I am thrilled to announce that it will be included in Xbox Game Pass on the same day. Thank you so much. Please welcome back Phil Spencer. We know that exclusive games from our Microsoft Studios are what originally turned so many of us into Xbox fans. My team and I take our commitment to you seriously to make Xbox One the best place for you to play and for you to have the best games on the world's most powerful console. This is why we're increasing our investment in our existing franchises that you already love. And this is why we are amplifying our investment in new worlds that will deepen your love for gaming on Xbox. We embarked on a quest, a quest to find creative teams that have the mastery of our art form. And we found innovative game designers, master storytellers, exceptional world builders. And now, I'm proud to introduce the creation of a brand new Microsoft Studio. The Initiative. Led by Daryl Gallagher, a visionary storyteller who has worked across some of the most iconic franchises for over 20 years. This new Santa Monica Studio is building a team of world-class talent 
to create groundbreaking new game experiences. And next, I'm excited to welcome Undead Labs to Microsoft Studios. This studio caught our attention with their visionary approach to building a zombie survival franchise. They just released their second infestation into the world, and in the first two weeks, over two million of you have joined the fight to survive. Now, it's my distinct pleasure to announce that we have acquired Playground Games. This is one of the highest rated studios of this generation, celebrated for their incredible craftsmanship. Not only will Playground Games continue to work on Forza Horizon, they're bringing their open world expertise to an entirely new project. We can't wait to share more about that later. And for the fourth new studio, it's my personal honor to welcome Ninja Theory to Microsoft Studios. I met Nina and Tamim when we collaborated on Kung Fu Chaos back on the original Xbox. And a minute into playing Hellblade, you know you're in the hands of master storytellers who are fearless about telling bold cinematic stories. This is a team gifted in creating new franchises. And yes, we've got a fifth studio to announce. Compulsion Games. Two years ago, we premiered a game we couldn't get out of our heads. A game that captivated us with its strong, fresh, and intense storytelling. We Happy Few is, released, is, is nearing its full release to gamers everywhere. So please help me in welcoming all of our new studios. By joining us at Microsoft Studios, these five new teams will have the resources, the platform, and creative independence to make big, take bigger risks, create even bolder worlds for you. Truth is the enemy of happiness. Isn't that the decision we all made? Oh, but you know the truth, don't you? There's not a thing I can tell you that you don't already know, is there? Have you had your joy, Ollie? People in town are getting a tad bit skinny. I think they're starving to death. And they're painting the streets in rainbows. Have you not noticed? Oh, Ollie. Why are you all wearing those ridiculous new masks? You should get one. They shape your face into a smile. And when you smile, you can't help being happy. We have to tell people. They need to know the truth. No! It's better not to know. Wiki, wiki, everybody. And it's another fabulous day in Wellington World. Do what you should be doing, and you never have to worry. Sally? Arthur, we're practically the only two people in this entire city not stoned out of our minds on joy. It's not a lovely day for it. It's a f***ing terrible day for it. If you force people to have the emotions you want, then you've turned them into robots made out of meat. Where is it? Where's the black boy? You've gone too far this time. People won't face facts. Not until we take their joy. And when we do that, they'll murder each other in the street. Exclusive.
World Premiere. premiere. Washington, D.C., the most heavily protected city on Earth. Within its limits, 177 foreign embassies, 550 elected officials, and 23,000 military personnel. In the event of an attack, critical personnel are evacuated. Underground shelters open, while complex defense systems patrol the sky. But nothing stopped the virus. 27 days after patient zero, Washington fell. It began with riots on K Street, then shootings in the National Mall. Troops withdrew to bunkers. Civilians were left in the streets. America is on the brink of collapse. But some people have survived. Gardens grow on rooftops, their fences patrolled with rifles, in communities that live under constant siege. Survival has taken the form of urban warfare. Centuries ago, on this very soil, brother fought brother, spilling blood to forge the United States. History is threatening to repeat itself. Now, in the heat of summer, six months after the outbreak began, a remnant of a corrupt state lurks in the shadows, ready to engage in a new civil war. Agents of the Division are the only ones standing against it. But how do you save a nation when its enemies come from within? Hear that? Yeah. Closer this time. are coming or what? Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas. Ah, here's the door.
Karpinski to the division. Hey, let me just talk to this guy. Glad to see you. We got a boy here who's gonna die without his meds. Those true sons assholes confiscated him, along with most of our drinking water. Up around Pink Okay, Station. meet us at the sinkhole? Yep. Okay, sure. Okay, definitely from the capital. You should have a new side mission on the map. Yeah, we're not that far. Okay, do it after the crash site? Sounds good. They're just ahead of us, Matt. Hey, I see you. I'll be up in a sec. Kit, we gotta get you leveled up. I know, please help, I've been busy. Toxic chemical residue detected. A lot of loot down there. Hey, you guys should really check this out. Almost there. So that's the control point. Hey, wait for me. Crap, they have a tank. Yep, I see him. Don't aggro him yet. Let me adjust my build. Got my crossbow and chem launcher. Cloud out. Matt, can you flank them and get a clear shot? I'll take that sniper on top. Wait for it. Got her. Matt, look out. All right, let me try to get that tank off you. More bad guys on the other side of the plane. Grenade, grenade. Duke, come on. Yep, yep, yep. Matt, I need your help. Over here. Seeker mine out. Whoa! Oh, I'm stuck. Do you a little help? Thanks, Matt. Oh, there's a dude rushing through the plane. Guys. Yep, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Got him. I'm down. Yeah, the hang on, I'll get you. Down. I'll cover you guys. Come on, come on. Get that weak point. Oh crap, Matt, watch out. Setting my drone. Thank you for the revive, Meg. I've got this guy behind the tank. Matt with the hive, nice. All right, just lay it on him. Again? Drone down. Now oh, there goes his armor. Ah! You're on your own. You go. Good job. Level up. Level 30. Oh, sweet. Congrats. All right, flare is up. Control point is ours. Nice. You guys want to check out the plane? Let's go. Analyzing ballistic residue. Looks no like a found. rough landing. Nuts. Let's check it out. Great idea. Let's just die. So, game plan. Take the capital back. I think we're ready. Three, two, one, go, 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 go. Please welcome the head of engineering, Xbox Game Pass, Ashley Spiker. This is a special time for gamers. We've never had so many incredible games to play. 
storied franchises, uncharted worlds, new releases, and cult classics. Genres we love, and genres we love to explore. There's only one problem. Too often, we are forced to choose one amazing game over another. So we set out to solve that problem. And to answer the question, what if you didn't have to choose? What if you could play them all? The answer, Xbox Game Pass, a way to give gamers the ultimate freedom to play. And your response has blown us away. Not only are you playing more games, you are spending more time gaming. Freedom of choice is leading to more discovery, more play, and more fun. And we couldn't be more inspired to keep building and unlocking more for you. So for the last year, we've been working on how to give you faster access to all those games. We leveraged the machine learning expertise we have at Microsoft and invented a way to start your games twice as fast. And naturally, we're calling it Fast Start. Unlike the current ready-to-start system, which is manually configured, Fast Start uses machine learning techniques based on how gamers actually play games. And Fast Start is designed to get better as the algorithms and parameters are refined over time. I'm pleased to announce that Fast Start will launch for select titles in the June update coming later this month. Ultimately, it all comes down to the games. We'll continue to deliver iconic favorites like Halo the Master Chief Collection, coming later this year. <laughs> we also plan to release all new exclusive games from Microsoft Studios, including Forza Horizon 4, Crackdown 3, and more, into the Xbox Game Pass catalog on the same day as their global release. Every month, we'll also bring new games from leading creative studios into your Xbox Game Pass library. Games like Ashen, Warhammer Vermintide 2, After Party, and Phoenix Point, all available in Xbox Game Pass the same day as their global release. So that's what's next, but let's talk about what's happening today. Tom Clancy's The Division. The, the Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited. And Fallout 4. All enhanced for Xbox One X in gorgeous 4K, and all of them playable today in Xbox Game Pass. Thank you to all of the developers working with us to bring freedom of choice to gamers around the world with Xbox Game Pass. Thanks, everyone.
I thought I knew why I came here. I saw it. The end. It was so vivid. But now the truth feels further away than ever. I still have so many questions. You said you... Trinity, get hold of this. Let's think this through. Do you realize the tragedy you have unleashed? The cleansing has begun. It falls to me now to stop it before it consumes us all. What have I done? to believe. to alter the course of humanity. If you had that power, what would you do? Exclusive. Unbreakable, die hard, true sickness, put this mic on the tripod, but I'm not Chow Yun Fat. Break, I'm still a pillar of stone, flows into your skull, mash on your whole militia like a cannibal, imagine you the antelope, and I'm the king of the jungle, animal instinct, phenomenal stamina, just think about a man on the brink of insanity, and it's me, you not a rapper, you a movie star, checking who we are, be the booty tar, Molotov cocktail, checking you can score this movie, regardless, a marvelous majestic, nope. All my power harness shit, my spoken word like a Voltron sword. And these poems close to arsenic, every deadly, deadly come your own. powers it be, it's in you, it's in me, and MC. That's all we know, the powers that be, it's in you, it's in me, and MC. That's all we know, the powers that be, it's in you, it's in me, and MC. That's all we know, the powers that be, it's in you, it's in me, and MC. Exclusive. They say you only live once. I beg to differ. I was born three times, and I've met death three times. My first home was Altanova. The curiosity I gained there cost me my first life. I awoke again in Tarif, village of the sorcerers. I once thought that this would be my true home. Everything changed when I started to ask the forbidden questions. What exactly is the true nature of the Blackstone? What lies beneath the vast desert? The world never paid heed to such questions. They just fought on, blinded, 
and hungered for more and more of the power. It is time that I, at long last, reveal the hidden secrets once and for all. dare to learn your true wretched self. Behold, I am Elezra, the darkness born from the desert. World Premiere We've known each other a long time. Hold the line! Hold the line! Nothing can You never had this much trouble. You gonna make it through this? They're demons! I've seen their unbound eyes! Red Grave has completely taken over! Let us pray for mercy. This is a trial from the heavens above. Hey, honey. Need assistance? Hey, you have to hit every single bump in the road? <laughs> Gotta ruin my crew! <laughs> You're up, crew cut. You taking nuts? Yeah, he's a real pro at smacking demons around. That's why I built him that well-functioning arm. <laughs> to kick demon ass. What? No chit-chat or monologue? Just getting right to the point, huh? My brilliant badass work is worth every dime, you know it. Cash first. Get back inside now! I've got a score to settle with that son of a bitch. Devil may cry. Please welcome, from Capcom, producer Matt Walker and director Hideaki Itsuno. As director, I've waited four years for this. Thank you so much. DMC is back. English, English is hard. Matt, you do it. Of course. It's been 10 years since Devil May Cry 4 was released, and fans have been asking for a true sequel ever since. So this is our response, loud and clear, that we hear you. Devil May Cry and Hideaki Itsuno are back. Early on in the development of Devil May Cry 5, we set our sights on creating something that was going to have world-class visuals. So we've scanned fully costumed models for all of our main characters, and with the power of Xbox One X, we're able to render them as realistically as possible. 
Now, while visuals are really important, the controls need to remain tight and responsive as well. So we've gathered the best minds at Capcom to ensure that we can still deliver that amazing gameplay that Devil May Cry is known for. And we think that we've made something that feels better than any action game we've ever created. Hold on, hold on. すべてのファンの皆様のために一番の自信作ができました。期待してもらって大丈夫です。よろしくお願いします。Ichizu-san says that he is convinced that this is the best game that he's ever made because we made it for you, our fans. And we hope you look forward to seeing more. Have a great E3! Exclusive. Exclusive. That tiny fox in a big world is a prime example of the reach of gaming today. A labor of love conceived and created by a single developer in Halifax, Nova Scotia is today commanding gaming's largest stage. Whether you're sharing the adventure of a tiny fox with more than 20 million viewers on Mixer or teaming up with Xbox Live friends to slay zombies, Gaming is an incredible community. We've always believed that building community is vital for gaming. There's real power in our shared experience. Sharing the same world, the same seasons, the same campaigns. And there's real meaning in sharing our love of gaming with fellow gamers. This community is the reason why we love premiering games here at E3. For the rest of our briefing, everything you show you will be world premiere games no one has seen before. <laughs> Starting off with something entirely new from our friends at Bandai Namco. On my last trip to Japan, their creative team showed me a sneak peek at their next game. Now, you get to see the first look. World Premiere. There are worlds that exist, separate from our own, where the impossible is reality. They consist of both good 
and evil. These worlds were never meant to meet. But things have changed. Now, they have begun to merge as one. And our last hope are the heroes we could only imagine, uniting to fight for our survival. Premiere. It's been 15 years since the fall. The city is a corpse, and we are the worms. We burrow in it, fighting for every useful piece of land to preserve ourselves from the terrors of the night and the horrors of the day. I know not who can hear my voice. I shall therefore speak a word unto here. Anyone who dares to steal food will be hanged, and their bodies will be exposed. Every day we rise from dust to choose between bad and worse. choices we take to survive will create the world to come. I'm Chris Avalone, and I'm excited to be working with Techland to create the world of Dying Light 2. Dying Light 2 is everything you'd expect from a bold sequel of the first game. A fluid parkour system with improved natural movement, deep and tactical first-person melee combat, and of course, terrifying nights when the infected emerge from the depths of the city to feed on anyone they can find. At the same time, we invite you to a new vision of the post-apocalypse, a bleak and unforgiving reality that we call the modern Dark Ages. Today, however, we want to give you a look at one of the impressive new features of Dying Light 2, a technical and narrative advancement for the franchise. Dying Light 2 will be the first in its genre where your choices have genuine consequences in the game itself. From how it looks, how it plays, to the events that occur, everything in the game world can change based on your decisions. The following demo throws a bit more light on this.
Dying Light 2 features a functioning ecosystem that reacts on multiple levels to the things you do and the choices you make. In the example we are about to show you, our protagonist undertakes a mission for the Peacekeepers, one of the many factions active in the city. They want you to negotiate with two survivors who are controlling and hoarding a water supply. Are you going to insult this with another final offer? Let's say you choose to carry out the Peacekeepers' orders one way or another. After this, you will start seeing a significant change in the city as access to the water supply allowed the peacekeepers to bring stability and develop the area. There's even running water for the people at street level, and that raises their morale and allows you to replenish your energy on the go. But there's a cost to this. The PKs have a rigid approach to law and order. So while the streets may be safer, it's only safer for those who side with them. So if you get on their bad side. Now let's return to that moment of choice. And instead of killing them, you choose to team up with this group to supply water on the black market. As you will see, this creates a very different set of consequences for the city. With water being a precious currency, it brings you access to new resources and trade. But this, in turn, attracts the worst type of people to the area. And this is just a single decision, one out of hundreds you will have to make. But it allows you to carve out your own world. Each player's game experience will be unique. And by the way, this is just what happens in the day. At night, well, things tend to get a lot darker. Exclusive world premiere. A lot of time has passed. You've gotten soft, complacent. You always knew this day would come. You always knew the three of you would be needed again. You always... Wait, what? Brand new game featuring body morphing genre mashups, three player couch co op, 4K hand drawn 2.5D graphics, and broad non specific feature declarations. They're back. World premiere. I was born to fight wars that no army could win. There was no fear. No failure. But the rules have changed. The enemy changed. And no one was ready for it. The Black Hand. They are the world's most powerful private army. But even they should fear what they've created. This is in a war, Rico. This is survival. Getting shot at? Holy time.
world premiere. Please welcome studio head Rod Ferguson. Thirteen years ago, when I began my Gears of War journey, we had no idea how big this franchise would become. And as it's grown, We've dreamed of taking it to new places and different ways to reach even more fans. And that's why today we're announcing Gears Pop, a collaboration with our friends at Funko to bring a unique mobile spin to the world of Gears. And mobile is not the only new place we're going. I'm excited to also announce the true Gears of War PC experience in a completely different genre, Gears Tactics. You create a whole new squad 12 years before Gears of War 1, as they hunt a locust monster maker responsible for destroying whole cities. It's our take on the classic turn-based strategy genre with a character-driven story, faster, more aggressive gameplay, a customizable squad and equipment, and of course, it wouldn't be a Gears game without a massive boss battle. We look forward to sharing more about tactics with you soon. But it's not just about going to new places. It's also about having new experiences. And the amazing team at the Coalition is working hard to bring you our most ambitious Gears of War title yet, Gears 5. Uh, as Kate, as Kate, you'll journey across the biggest and most beautiful world we've ever created, with the War for Humanity escalates on two fronts outside the capital city, and within Kate herself. In this moment from the game, Kate leads a rescue message to a remote village, but something goes horribly wrong. You can't see this. You don't want to see this. recommend we maybe get these people out of here. Hey, just slow down. No, Foz is right. We need to move. What are you talking He's dead, man. Give her a minute. She'll get her a minute in the Raven. What the hell is wrong with you? Del, we need to leave. I'm not going. Excuse me? For months now, I've been having these dreams. Nightmares. But I think they were messages. Something's happening to me. It's your grandmother's? Enough. We'll, we'll deal with this later. Foss, round these people up. I need help. There's a place up north. I think we can find you answers there. No! No! Ah. <clears throat> Absolutely not. We have orders. You'll go with me. 
God damn it, both of you, listen. I'll go with her. Look, if you're missing, Jen will notice. Okay. I'll push Jack the coordinates. No, Corporal, you are coming back to Noafira. That is a direct order. Well, Captain, screw your order. This isn't about you, it's about me. I need to fix this. Hey, watch her. Her necklace? That's a locust symbol. Yes, yeah, so? She would never be our enemy by choice. I know yeah, that. Because she would die for us. I know that. But what if it's not her choice? Shady, tell you. This is a wild game of survival. In the entire history of Xbox, in the entire history of E3, in the entire history of our industry, gaming is now at its most vibrant. Today, we shared our commitment to giving you the freedom to discover and play all of the great new games coming to Xbox Game Pass. Today, we showcased more games than we ever have before. 50 games, 18 titles with exclusivity, and 15 world premieres. Today, we shared our most diverse gaming portfolio in every measure, from breadth and art style, genre and cultures, range and subject and setting, scale and story and scope and creative vision. And every one of these plays best on Xbox. The world of gaming is on an historic growth path where the increasing number of gamers is met with the increasing creative power of game developers. In this significant moment, we are constantly challenging ourselves. Where can we take gaming next? Our answer, we commit and harness the full breadth of our resources at Microsoft to deliver on the future of play. Our experts in Microsoft research are developing the future of gaming AI, so the worlds and characters we enjoy will be even more rich and more immersive. Our cloud engineers are building a game streaming network to unlock console quality gaming on any device. Not only that, we are dedicated to perfecting your experience everywhere you want to play on your Xbox, your PC, or your phone. And of course, our hardware team. The same team that delivered unprecedented performance with Xbox One X is deep into architecting the next Xbox consoles, where we will once again deliver on our commitment to set the benchmark for console gaming. 
And let's talk about our games themselves. We are committed to building an industry-leading first-party studios organization. And as you saw earlier, we are making one of our greatest single-year investments in teams by adding five new creative studios. We have committed our team, our company, our technical resources, so we can declare to you today and next year and all of the years after that, you will always experience the best in gaming on Xbox. So choose the games you want to play. There are worlds to be saved, heroes to be made, and legends to become. Together. Thanks, and have a great evening. In 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion. But it's there, just around the corner, and it keeps you going. It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer.